world where there was as much toxicity as there is in our world. In our world, we have the toxicity of the air we breathe, the water we drink, it's in our food, it's in our environment, it's in the finishes on our kitchen cupboards, it's in our carpets, it's in the paint on our walls, the wallpaper, the fabrics of the clothing we wear, the cosmetics we put on our faces that we bathe with, wash our hair with. It's in the pesticides that go on the, on the lawn, on the vegetable gardens, on the flowers. Uh, it's pouring out of smokestacks uh, as industrial waste. It's um, literally, you know, our, our entire environment. We swim in a sea of toxicity. We breathe it. You get way more toxicity breathing in your lungs from going outside your house if you live near a road or driving down the road in your car. You get out, you're in the city or you're in the suburbs even. You get out of your car and you walk across the parking lot from your car to the supermarket. You get more toxicity breathing the air from your car to the door of the supermarket than you would get smoking say an entire pack of cigarettes. You get way more cadmium that way. Once you walk inside the supermarket, and this is something that's happened to me many times, you walk inside a big store and it's got a lot of electronics in there. Usually when you walk in, they've got the TVs displayed right there. So they've got, you know, 200 televisions playing and they've got, you know, fluorescent lights and they've got tons of new products, you know, stacked. I mean, this is particularly true in some of the big box stores in the U.S. But I would walk in the door and after taking five or six steps, this wave of dizziness would come over me and I would almost fall down. And I think it was as much the electromagnetic pollution from the televisions, from the lights, as it was from the chemicals that were being outgassed from all the products in the room. Um, when you get really sensitized to this sort of thing, when, you're, when, when your toxic load is so much that your liver and your uh, digestive system and your kidneys and your, and your colon and your intestines and so forth can't, can't detoxify your body, you get to the point where you feel like you're on the point of death. So the story is, is that it would be very good if you would read all of these books because you, know, you yourself may be ill, you may be suffering from toxicity and may not know it because sometimes toxicity or autoimmune problems can be simmering just below the surface in your body and just waiting for some kind of an illness to hit you. And this is what happened to my daughter last year. Was it two years ago? Uh, she, got, she got a cold. The doctor prescribed uh, antibiotics and a, a, a prednisone. It was, it, the cold turned into kind of an asthma. And the asthma itself was a clue that she was suffering toxicity. And when she took these medications, it, the toxic overload was such that, you know, she completely collapsed. Her liver collapsed and she almost died. This was, uh, you know, not a very pleasant experience for somebody who's so young. And I think that uh, probably many of you watching this have, you know, all kinds of things. You have, you know, a bad back. You have uh, cold hands, cold feet. You have poor digestion. You can't gain weight or you can't lose weight. Um, you have uh, asthma, you have itchy eyes, you have, you know, any numbers of sy symptoms that suggest that you have some sort of an autoimmune disorder. So that was what was behind my searching for a different way to eat. Because clearly something has to happen. Now, you'd think that it would be just as simple as beginning to eat organic foods and staying on the same diet. And this is what I thought at first. If you look at all of these books, everyone has a different uh, proposal for a diet. They're, they're basically the same, but in some cases they allow, you know, eggs and nuts and dairy. And some of them, no eggs, no nuts, no dairy. Uh, there seems to be, you know, a handful of things that you should eliminate entirely, at least for a period of time and then reintroduce them one at a time to see how they affect you. And that's um, foods from the nightshade family. That's eggplants, tomatoes, uh, any kind of peppers, except black pepper. Black pepper is not a nightshade, but any kind of red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers, any bell peppers, hot peppers, jalapenos, uh, chilies, you know, that sort of thing, which means that you have to eliminate all packaged 
spice mixes because nearly all of them have some kind of pepper in them. You also have to get rid of MSG. MSG is a deadly neurotoxin. It's an excitotoxin. It, the reason it makes foods taste so good is because it excites your neurons. It keeps triggering and signaling and signaling and signaling. And it excites the neuron until it dies. MSG kills your cells, kills your brain cells, your neurological cells. The stuff is poison. Aspartame. Aspartame is deadly, absolutely deadly. People I know, and I drank diet sodas myself for a long time. People I know who drink diet sodas for any period of time, they start having what you call brain zaps. And that's where you have this like little, it feels like a little, a little shot of electricity goes through your brain. You may be laying in bed at night trying to go to sleep, and all of a sudden like, a little, bzz, bzz, you know, and you know, like a, a little blank spot in your brain. And you say, what the hell was that? You know, did I hear some kind of an electrical spark in the room? Well, all of those things are there. And, you know, just so you know, it's so bad in our Western environment. We've done such a good job poisoning our world that even Eskimo women in the far north who still live on their natural whale blubber diet you know, have toxins in their breast milk that they feed their babies. And when you feed your baby with your own breast milk and you're toxic, that, that toxicity is concentrated. So your baby is getting a concentrated dose of toxicity. It's terrible. So that was what started my search. And little by little, we came to the realization that one of the biggest problems in, um, terms of toxicity of the human body one you know once you've eliminated you know the chemical toxins once you've tried you know worked on detoxing you know the pesticides and the and the external chemicals once you've gotten rid of the plastics got rid of your teflon uh you know done a real good detox there are still you know certain foods that are actually toxic to your body and some of them are toxic to just about everybody and i would say wheat is probably the number one toxin and I know you're going, oh my God, wheat. Wheat is in everything. Go to the supermarket, read a label on any kind of prepared food and even some foods that you have to do something for to prepare and you're gonna find that there is wheat in it. They use wheat as a thickener. They use wheat syrups as a sweetener. You know, you just, you simply can't get away from wheat. Okay, so wheat and dairy, and for me, eggs. A lot of people can eat eggs. I personally can't. I also can't eat any tree nuts. And I think that I have a lot of company in not being able to eat tree nuts. And I have some company not being able to eat eggs. And I think that, you know, if people really give it a real honest test and eliminate it from their diet completely, I think you, you'll find that nearly all people, or there may be some exceptions, should not be eating dairy either. And that dairy... Dairy doesn't mean just drinking a glass of milk. Dairy means cheese, yogurt, um, you know, any kind of, of dairy product, with the exception of butter. Butter and ghee, which is clarified butter, seems to be tolerated by people who are even dairy intolerant. And you don't have to be diagnosed as lactose intolerant to be unable to really tolerate dairy because it can be agglutinating in your body or doing something in your body that triggers your autoimmune reaction. I am now at the point that I completely control my pain and all of my autoimmune reactions by diet, by eliminating those things that are inflammatory. And let me tell you, my rheumatoid arthritis was so bad that my arms were covered with hundreds of little lumps under the skin. What those little lumps are for the people, those of you who have rheumatoid arthritis, and you don't just get them on your arms, but that's the place they're, no, they're most pronounced. Those lumps are inflamed blood vessels. Now, when you get to the point where you can control your disease enough that you, the lumps under your skin go away, that means that things are calming down. You do have to be careful because if you get sick, if you get a cold or the flu or some other infection, it's going to trigger your immune system to go into action and your immune system is very, very good at what it does. And once it gets triggered, it starts attacking you. So you have to eat foods and take supplements that calm that immune reaction down because it's going to want to go into overdrive. So anyway, I control my pain and I am losing weight on this diet that we've 
put together after several years of working and experimentation. And the main thing is, is the elimination, total elimination of wheat. Anything that has wheat in it, no wheat. And that's where we come back again to buckwheat.